All right, so today I'd like to talk a bit about fractions, um, mainly about canceling out uh, common factors. So as you can see here in question three, uh, we've got three on the top and we've got a three on the bottom. Uh, those factors can be canceled out, even though they're not right above each other, that's okay. Because we have multiplication here and we have division here, and according to PEMDAS, uh, multiplication and division are basically equivalent uh, in terms of order of operations. So we're allowed to do either one first. So my choice would be I want to do this division first, right? So you can think of this as going all the way across this division bar. These threes will cancel and my result will be one fifth, right? So I could do the same thing here and get two sevenths, right? It just saves you a lot of time and energy. Uh, when you have a question like number one here, this 9 can be broken down into 3 times 3, and then one of these 3's can be canceled. So you'll end up with 7 over 8 times 3 is 24. And the benefit of doing it this way is that if you're careful enough um, to cancel out all the common factors, then you know that you won't have to reduce this final result. Okay? So this method is definitely worth practicing. It'll save you a lot of time and, and effort. Um, and it pays dividends later um, when you get to the harder curriculum, which we'll see uh, in a bit. Now, this 2 and 4 can be reduced, so the 4 becomes 2 times 2, and then we cancel out one of those pairs, and we'll be left with 3 over 14. Um, so as you start getting down into some harder questions here, um, you could take this 90, for example, and make it 9 times 10, and then the 9s can cancel. Then you could take this 24, making it 6 times 4, and then the 6s can be canceled. So you'll end up, whenever you get rid of everything on top, you still have a 1, and then the bottom, you just multiply up to be 40. Right? Now, uh, this can be extended to having multiple different um, fractions here. Uh, so, for example, we'll look at 1b right here. Uh, the sevens can be canceled. And you might get to a situation like this where everything is pretty much prime. Um, so in this instance, you really can't go any further. But you know for a fact that you can't go further, so it's not so bad. So anyway, you just would multiply everything up. 45 here, and then 77 times 2. So what is that? 154, right? Okay, um, so now another point that I would like to bring out here is if I was to put some zeros here, that wouldn't actually make things that much more difficult. So for example, any trailing zeros can be canceled, but not only do they have to be right on top of each other, but you can actually cancel them um, cross canceling, just like we would do with the numbers. So anyway, these zeros uh, can be canceled out and yeah so in the original problem I would just cancel this zero with this zero um, effectively even if these numbers were say 70 I could still do that but anyway since they're tens I'll just get rid of them and then this 9 is 3 times 3 and then I can get rid of one of these 3's so the top would be 15 the bottom would be 28 and you'll notice that your multiplication skills will come in handy here, uh, both in the forwards and reverse directions. So let's see what else we have here. Um, maybe some ones that are a little bit bigger numbers. Well, let's see, maybe on this page. Um, not too bad. So here we're getting letters coming into the picture. So um, the rule here, we have to use our exponent rule where we have w to the sixth over w squared, we would use our subtraction of exponents. So we'd end up with w to the fourth power. And 25, we can break into 5 times 5. 20, we break into 5 times 4. The 5s can be canceled. And we'll end up with 5w to the fourth over 4. Okay. Um, same thing here. 18 becomes 6 times 3. 24 is 6 times 4. The x's, we can subtract 4 from 2 and get 2. The y's can cancel out fully. 
these sixes cancel out, you end up with 3x squared over 4. Okay? So I think you guys start getting the picture here as to what happens. Now, sometimes you might end up with a negative result. So here you have a 2 and a 6. This 6 can be brought down to a 2 times 3. The 2's can cancel. So you end up with a 3 on the bottom. Now here when you start doing your subtractions, you end up with 1 minus 2, which makes negative 1. Uh, but what that really represents is it represents the x being on the wrong side of the fraction. So you can write that on the other side of the fraction with a positive exponent of the same magnitude. Okay. Um, same thing with the y's. Uh, if you notice, you'll get negative 2 if you do the subtraction the correct way. But if you do it sort of the wrong way, you'll get a 2 on the bottom. Okay. That is 3 minus 1. And then again, the w's you can do the wrong way. You can do 3 minus 2 and you get 1, but it has to be on the bottom. And since there's nothing on the top, we just write a 1. Okay? So you get the idea with that. That moves us into the next uh, piece of the puzzle, which has to do with factoring. So we'll, we'll inter leave a, uh, a review of our factoring methods. So the first factoring method is known as GCF. It stands for Greatest Common Factor. So what we do is we factor out a 2 here, and we'll be left with r minus 2. And then this r minus 2 can cancel with this r minus 2, and the result will just be 2. Okay. Now you might be wondering to yourself, uh, am I allowed to cancel out those r's right off the bat? And the answer is absolutely not. Right? Because if you did, you would end up with 1 as an answer and that's not really the right answer as we just saw right so the good question is why right so you should always ask yourself why why are these rules the way they are why can i do certain things and why am i not allowed to do certain things it's a good question to ask so let's consider that well uh it comes down to the difference between factors and terms okay so factors are part of a multiplication division problem. Okay? Whereas terms are part of a addition subtraction problem. Okay? So for example, this 2, okay, is a factor, okay, but it's also part of a term. You see this whole thing collectively the 2r is a term. So the 2 right there is a factor that's within a term. So even if I had a 2r on the bottom, these still would not be able to cancel because they're not fully uh, factored out, meaning they're not fully um, factors. Now, on the other hand, if I factor out a 2 and I'm left with r minus 2, the fact that I factored it out makes it a factor. Notice that the only operation that it's involved in now is multiplication. It's not involved in any additions or subtractions. Whereas this 2r was involved with a subtraction of the 4, making it a term. All right? So that's why terms can only cancel out if I have the additive inverse. Okay? Which is a fancy word for the negative version. Okay? That's the way that terms cancel out. Factors on the other hand cancel out in a completely different way. So factors cancel out when you have one on top and one on bottom. Okay. So that answers the age-old question of when am I allowed to cancel things out. Uh, you just have to decide whether it's a term or a factor and use the appropriate method for that item. Okay. So with that said, let's continue and look at some more examples of how to factor. So we'll go down to this which describes our third method for factoring known as trinomial method okay yes we skipped the second one but we'll come back to that so the trinomial method involves putting the square root of this into each position and then this minus sign drops into this position and this whether it's plus or minus tells us whether we should use the same sign as the first parentheses or a different sign so in this case I should use the same sign that I already have now from here, uh, I just want to put a 5 and a 5. reason is I need a number that multiplies up to 25 and 
combines to 10. So I'm looking for two numbers that multiply up to 25 and combine to 10. So if I have trouble finding them, I can do the following. I can think of all the numbers that multiply up to 25. And in this case, it's a pretty short list. And I look for the ones that combined up to the number of interest, and that pair is the one that does it. So anyway, um, you'll see the basics there of trinomial. And let's look at another example here. Oh, well, we didn't finish the question. The, to finish the question, of course, we would cancel out these, and we'd be left with a 1 on top and a v minus 5 on the bottom. right? Uh, now, this example here, of course, we cannot cancel these 6s for the reasons we just discussed. Um, and another way to think about it is you have parentheses around this, making it the whole thing one uh, big group, if you will, which could be a factor potentially uh, altogether. Um, but uh, each individual piece uh, is part of a uh, addition or subtraction problem, making it a term. And terms can only be canceled uh, via the additive inverse. Okay. So now let's break this uh, denominator down into its parts. So uh, we'll get a plus sign here. And this is a negative this time, so that means that the sign is different from the first one. The first one was plus, this one must be minus. Now I need to look at factors of 6. So I start with 1 and 6, 2 and 3, and I need them to combine to 5. Notice that both of these combine to 5, depending on if I uh, do addition or subtraction. right? If I do addition, uh, the 2 and 3 makes 5. If I do subtraction, the 6 and 1 could make 5. Now, how do I know which one to take? Well, in this case, I just look at the signs here. Notice that they're different. That means that they're going to subtract. So 6 and 1 are going to do the trick. Okay. Uh, then the nice thing that happens here is we get a cancellation. So we end up with 1 over x minus 1. Remember, when we don't have anything left here, we just put a 1. All right, now let's see if we could find any examples of our, yep, here we go, our second method of factoring, which is known as dots, difference of two squares. Okay, so that's here on the bottom. So we notice that uh, both of these terms are perfect squares, okay, and there's a difference, meaning a subtraction in the middle. So what we do is we take the square root, which is easy to do when you have a b squared, it's just b and b. Right? And when you have 49, you should know that 7 times 7 is 49. And we just put a plus and a minus. Right Now we have to just deal with the top, which is another trinomial. So we have b and b, and the plus sign remains there. Uh, the minus indicates that the sign is different, so we should put a minus here. Now we have to take 28 and factor it down, 1 and 28, 2 and 14. Uh, 7 and 4. And th those are the ones that will combine to 3. Okay. So we put a 7 here and a 4 here, and the difference would be 3, so we're in business. Now the b plus 7 will cancel, so we'll end up with b minus 4 over b minus 7. Okay.